uh, hello again. Um, as you can probably remember from the last video, I said that this video would come out yesterday and it did not. Uh, and you can probably tell that uh, it sounds a little different for two reasons. That fan is gone and um, I'm sick. Uh, so yeah, yesterday did not feel like doing anything. Um, so you might recognize the word Dropbox, Dropbox, you might see the little green check marks, but uh, what we're going to do from here on out is um, I'm going to post a link to the root folder of each uh, video, um, videos, um, that's the word I'm looking for, relevant uh, files. So you'll be able to uh, download and follow along. Uh, I don't know if you'll actually be able to join the shared folder or not without actually giving me an email address to invite you or not, but uh, if somebody wants to volunteer, if that is the case, if somebody wants to volunteer to join each one and then invite people to it as they ask for it, um, that would be helpful. Um, because I'm probably not going to always have time to do that. But yeah, I know th these videos are uh, short and kind of um, don't have a whole lot of content. Uh, but as we go along, uh, each four of these videos that pertain to this subject, I think it'll only be four, might be five videos, um, depending on which one gets the most views or people watch all the way through or, you know, et cetera, I can determine uh, my audience's um, receptiveness to the content and how well you're actually following and where we need to start uh, when we move on from this. Um, we're going to take some baby steps in reverse engineering, uh, basically I'll write a dummy program and you guys can follow along. Uh, there will always be links and yeah, it would be a lot better than it used to be I think and we're going to learn assembly as we go uh, with reverse engineering much how I did uh, back in the day. So uh, let's hop into the uh, program that injects our DLL. Uh, also, um, I'm doing all of this in WX Dev C++, which is like a revamped version of Dev C++. Um, it's still pretty deprecated, but for the most part, any code in here should compile in like code blocks or um, Microsoft Visual Studio. Um, I guess I could have used an express version of Visual Studio. I just wanted to use something that was free um, so that there was no issues of people not being able to obtain the tools. I'll also put a link to this in the description. Um, so yeah, our, our goal is to cause a program to load our DLL and how we're going to do that is pretty simple. But there's a few steps that we have to take. So first, we know that we're going to need to open the process um, because the end goal is to have it load our DLL from its memory space. Um, so to do that, first we're going to need, if, if we look at open process, uh, it takes three arguments and it's uh, access, uh, inherit, and the process ID. So we know that we're going to need to get the process ID. And to quote a friend of mine, anyone who says that they're not a Google programmer, in quotes, um, is a liar, uh, which I didn't know was the case. I always kind of felt like, you know, I, I wasn't as good as I should be because I didn't always remember, you know, how many arguments or what each argument was or, you know, even function names sometimes uh, so you I mean I I always Google like you know for example uh, process ID from window handle and then you know this will pop up it's like okay uh, yeah. so do that the more you read the more you look the more you learn um, you just have to have a basis of what you're looking for um, 
So the first thing we do is we find the window. And we know that its title is dummy. We're not sure what the class is. Uh, we don't really care. And we're going to store that handle in hwind, which is a declared window handle. Um, then we need to get the PID, the process ID. And this fancy function here does it from an hwind, from a handle, a window handle. And so we pass it the window handle that we just found, and we tell it to store it in this D word called proc ID. And then we're going to open the process uh, with all access and store the handle that is returned by open process in H process. And we're going to ask for all access. We don't want to inherit. And the process ID is, well, what we just got from this function. Now we need to allocate some space to write the name of our DLL into that program's memory. Um, so we're going to do that by using virtual alloc uh, extended. And we're going to pass it the process. Uh, I forget what this argument is, but we don't need it. <laughs> um, the number of bytes, uh, which is the string length of uh, our DLL character array. This just says we want to be able to commit to the memory. Um, we could write this with a fancy little word like this, but I didn't. And then this is read write access. And that's going to return the first address or a pointer to the first byte that we can write to. And we're going to start in DLL virtual location. And generally, you would use some sort of dynamic pathing or an exact path of where it is stored, but we're just going to, for all intents and purposes, make sure that our DLL is in our target uh, programs folder, root folder. And next, we're going to actually write uh, this data into this location. So we're going to say write into this process's memory uh, at this location, this character array for as many bytes as it is and we don't care how many we wrote uh, because we know how many we wrote also there's no error checking in this um, because I don't care um, <laughs> basically you could just check the return of all of these to make sure that they were what they were supposed to be and if they were you would just output an error and call it good but uh, worst case scenario by not error checking is that it won't work. Um, whereas you get to the end and you test and it doesn't work, you just output it doesn't work, whatever. So next thing we want to do is call load library with our DLL path as an argument from the dummy's memory space. So we're going to use create remote thread. We're going to pass it our process handle. We're going to not care about a couple arguments that I don't even recall what they are. But this one is, uh, it says, and where do you want to, what function do you want us to run? And basically, we want to cast um, as a thread start routine the return value of get proc address, which is uh, going to find the address of a function for us and we're passing in the get module handle of kernel 32 which is the, so the first argument of get proc address is uh, what module do you want to look at and then the second argument is a string of the exported name that you're looking for so we're looking for load library a within kernel 32 and it's going to return the address of the uh, of that function and we're going to cast it into a start routine and then we're going to pass to that function the name of our DLL, which is stored at this location now since we wrote it there. So that's a fancy way of saying that this is going to create a thread within the dummy's uh, target memory whose one task is to call load library A with our DLL's path. And that will cause it to cause the target program to well load our DLL and 
initialize it. And then down here, uh, this just says, so within our DLL, we make a window, a hidden window, called uh, find me with the class hook phone home. Um, we'll get into that in the next video. This just says, uh, while you can't find it, wait. And when you do find it, send a message to it so that we can see that it's working. Um, and then from here, we're going to write, uh, after we find the functions in the teardown uh, of the dummy program, we're going to come back to this one. And we're going to write uh, you know, useful stuff uh, that uses those functions, as well as the functions within our DLL that call those functions. So if you can kind of get the drift of this. Um, so yeah, that is that program. And when we run it, I have it all in binaries here. So if we run the dummy, I'm some dummy program, we're going to attach to it with Ollie. Dummy. No, not that. Dummy. There we go. And hit run and view executable modules. So right down here, if you know. There we go. Now you can see. So this bar is blank. We don't see my DLL in any of the modules. But if we run, I'm going to just off screen, I think. I can still see it. So I'm going to run our program, which is that code, and you see my DLL pop up in Ollie right here. But you also see, if we give this focus, that it says, hey, a new module loaded. And you can actually tell Ollie to break uh, when a module is loaded if you want to, which can be helpful. So yeah, it's working. And if we look at the target program, our DLL uh, said we're in and it got put it call some function and process results and then the, the I'm waiting is from the original program so yeah that is working a treat uh, the next video we will go into the creation of the DLL itself uh, thanks for watching um, of course you know, thumbs up, subscribe, do all that jazz, but also get connected, uh, grab this stuff. If you want to look ahead, you can. Um, if not, don't worry about it. Uh, I think the DLL is actually in, yeah, it is. It's in Visual Studio right now. I'm probably going to rewrite that in, using the WX dev because, well, I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and, uh, yep.